So now I'd like to turn uh, the floor over to our first workshop leader, uh, Mrs. Jamie Foley. He's going to talk to us about doing the program at the school. Good afternoon, everyone. You have a note-taking sheet in your folder entitled Considerations for Instituting Poetry Out Loud. Um, I put together this kind of open space for you to kind of organize your thoughts uh, as I give you some tips just as a classroom teacher and as a building leader um, bringing this program to your school. So you are welcome to take notes or not. As I said earlier, I have been doing Poetry Out Loud since it began. It was a very tiny, tiny program um, in 2005, I believe. Um, but we instituted it in just a single, two single classes, like the seniors basically participated in our building. Um, and it just so happened that our student won the state competition that first year. And then he ended up winning at Washington, D.C. Um, the very first year that they had a competition. And I have to say to you that um, I went along as like the English department chair. I didn't even have him in class. And it was like the most exciting moment of my life, like <laughs> literally. Like I, it was so, uh, it was so exciting and such a nice, it's, it's just a nice experience for the kids. Um, so uh, the little moppy top red haired guy on the videos, Jackson is, is our old kiddo, our old student. So first, I'd like to talk to you about kind of bringing Poetry Out Loud into your individual classrooms, excuse me, your individual classroom, and then potentially your department or your building. Um, I'm just going to share what my colleagues at, at CAUSE and myself do um, and give you some ideas for bringing it to your room. As Ms. Sweat indicated, it, the flexibility of Poetry Out Loud is really a beneficial piece to the program. You can kind of do it wherever and however works best for you. For me, I begin it just as a standard homework assignment. I give the kids the Poetry Out Loud website. I tell them to go on. Of course, they know because we've been doing it for several years. They know what Poetry Out Loud is, and, and they, they know, OK, this, it's time. Um, but I ask them to go onto the website, find a poem that they want to memorize, print out a copy of the poem, and bring it in. And that's their homework assignment. Just give me the copy of the poem that you're planning to perform for us. If, you're, if it's new to your building, obviously they have all sorts of resources online and videos and, and you know, kind of introductory materials that you may want to share with the kids. The $20,000 may be enough. You know, that may be enough to kind of like push them in the direction of participating. Typically a homework assignment's pretty good. You know, like, hey, I'll give you 10 points, 15 points to bring in a copy of a poem. And, and, and the kids do. Um, I personally, as, as Katie said, there's 900 poems on this website. I do not narrow the poems down for my students. I just tell them, go on and you find a poem that you like every year. Can I do the same one I did last year for my English class? Yes, you can do that same one as long as it's still on the website. I like the idea of kids going online and reading the poems. So kids who don't want to use the same one they used in the previous English class, they'll come in and say, Mrs. Foley, I spent, I spent hours reading poetry last night trying to figure out which, it's like fantastic, great, all right, give me the one you chose. Um, so I like the idea of kind of, you know, kind of delving in there. And they do have nice search options on the Poetry Out Loud website too, like a randomizer that they can just randomly, they can hit random and a poem will pop up and that might be, you know, it might appeal to them. Some of my colleagues in my department do narrow down the poems. Um, for example, my uh, AP literature teacher in, in my building just last week said, you know, for my major British writer students, they are only going to memorize British poets. So I went online and I pulled all the names of the British poets. I said, okay, you know, it, it, it's fine. Um, in the past, uh, my American teacher only wanted them to do American Poet, okay. Um, it, so it's totally up to you, like your, you can fit into the curriculum you're doing, um, or you can kind of just leave it open, depending on your students. You know, if you know your students are gonna get overwhelmed with 900 poems, 
maybe you do want to narrow it down. Also, if a student chooses, or if uh, several students choose the same poem, that's fine. I allow that. Um, if that poem spoke to four kids, three kids, then that's, that's you know, that's great. Um, let's see. Make a due date for the submission of the poem. You know, usually, like I said, you might want to give them a weekend, or sometimes I give them that assignment over like a break, like Thanksgiving break or winter break. And so when they come back, they have to hand that poem to me. And that's kind of all I do with that poem. You can have them like work with the poems. Um, and there's a great uh, assignment or lesson plan that Poetry Out Loud produced using tone and tonal maps. I believe there's some copies over there. It's fabulous. We, we use that tonal map piece um, with our own poetry units, actually, in my building. Like, I've kind of instituted it in teaching poetry. Um, I do use Poetry Out Loud in conjunction with my poetry unit. It just kind of falls at the same right time every year. So as we're kind of breaking poems down right now, uh, in my IB class, we're looking at William Wordsworth's poetry. So then they know, as part of that unit, they're going on to Poetry Out Loud and finding a different poem to, to memorize if you don't have a poetry unit, or you've already done it, or you don't do it until the spring, it's okay. You know, like I think that just the reading of the text and you can kind of just kind of put it in there. I know for my IB juniors, uh, I don't do poetry until the spring, but we will still do poetry out loud around winter break, you know, around that time, Thanksgiving, winter break. As far as the recommended timeline, speaking of winter break and all of that, I do recommend starting early. You will want to have the students have enough time to actually memorize the piece. I usually give about two or three weeks from the submitting of, okay, I'm going to work on this poem, to we're having this classroom competition. We're going to pick our winner today. I don't give too much time because then it just goes on the back burner. You know, our students love to procrastinate. So I, I about two or three weeks, and then it can't, it doesn't have to take a lot of classroom time either. You know, you can maybe as a bell ringer or at the end of class, um, if you have extra time at the end of a lesson, you can have, okay, rehearse, recite your poem to each other, you know, or something like that. Um, but I do not spend a lot of classroom like time, like, okay, teaching the Billy Collins poem. And now I got to teach Mary Oliver over here. It's it's up for the kids to kind of discern. Now, if they want help, of course I help. But it doesn't have to overwhelm your classroom. Okay. As far as performance goes, I score. I give them a homework score on it, or I guess like a quiz score. And I do not tell them, I know some people really focus on the actual performance, but for my students who, this is an absolute terrifying prospect, and we all have those students, I tell them, okay, your score on this performance is not based on your performance at all. You will get a homework, quiz, whatever, like 30 points, score based on your memorization. That's it. I'll have the copy of the poem there, and I'm going to check every time you make an error. Like, I'm going to highlight it. And then based on how many highlights I have there, I'm going to come up with, like, a quiz score for you. So the potential of you being absolutely horrible at this but still getting <laughs> perfect is there. Because in my mind, it's not – it's about participating in the actual poem, right? Like, participate in the class project, memorize that poem, and get up there and do it. You know, like, that's – now, if you're not, you know, Jackson Hilly, who's, you know, was a theater guy and, you know, that's okay. You know, now you've got this poem in you and it's okay if you're not the winner, but you can still get some points for actually participating in it. Um, I do score them. So as they're kind of performing for the actual classroom competition, I'll have the score sheet out that's in your, in your packets, of course, and I'll kind of be ticking off a score right? Now, some kids you know are not going to win, right? Because they are terrified, and the prospect of doing this in front of the whole school is like, ah, yeah. So, the, but the kids who I can tell are really trying for it, I'll kind of score them a little bit more carefully. The other thing that I do is, as students 
go, I ask them why they chose that poem, right? Why, why out of all those did you choose it? Um, and so they'll share that with the class after the recitation. And then at the very, very end, after my classroom recitations, I kind of do like a, like an American Idol, here's a piece of paper, everybody gets a little slip of paper, and you put down your top three students, everybody in the class, you put down your top three. And my, I always tell the kids, don't put down your, like your friend, put down the one who, on this cold listen of this poem, because probably they haven't studied the poem, which one helped you feel the poem, helped you understand the poem best, right? And just kind of that first listen to it. Um, and so then, in conjunction with my scores and the students kind of American Idol judging, um, we'll come up with a classroom winner. I do this in um, nearly all my classes. In my ninth grade classes, we have quite large classes uh, in ninth grade because it's a dual curriculum. So we don't participate in Poetry Out Loud, but my other classrooms do. Um, and I guess we're kind of getting into the building in your department or building. If you're bringing this back to your, your building as a department chair or as a teacher leader, um, I would recommend you will find another English teacher in your building that will go along with you on this. Because we're English teachers and like, we like poetry, right? Um, so so there will, the English teachers will pretty much buy in. Of course, you may have some that are like, no, I can't do it. I don't have the time. You know? um, it doesn't, that's okay. It doesn't mean it has to kind of like put the brakes on your building competition because, you know, Miss Susie is really cranky and doesn't want to doesn't want to do it. So then that means two or three members of your department go for it and maybe weave it into your classrooms. If you have classroom winners that then you can make a school wide competition from them. But I also for my ninth graders in years past that didn't get to participate in a school a classroom competition, I had, again, like American Idol, I don't know, I, I don't even watch that show, but um, <laughs> like American Idol, I had auditions for students whose teachers didn't do the program but still wanted to do it, right? Or the classroom, it didn't work and they just couldn't do the program but they still wanted to do it. I had open auditions like during a lunch or after school. And so the kid would come in and recite and then they could potentially get a place on the school competition, you know, whatever, list, right? List of competitors. So that might be an option for you. Like if you feel like, oh, I don't want to do it by myself. The other kids are going to be upset or they're going to want to participate. That could be a potential option um, for your, your school. Um, I would take it to your department chair first. If you're not the department chair, I would also mention it to your principal. Uh, I mean, it's a great program and it gets kids free money. Like, you know, I'm sure they would want to do it. If you have a teacher based team or like a PLC, a peer learning community, that might be the place to bring the information to your staff in your department. Um, also, you could, uh, and I have in the past, if you want to build up the school competition, like if you have only four classroom winners and you're like, uh, how are we going to have a school competition with four people, right? And you want to build up the participation. The American, American Idol auditions would really help. Also, you can always take like the top two, Right. Like if they were if that was if they were good enough to score second, then you could move them on to the school round. And then that way you have more participation in a, in a wider range of of, you know, the school participating in it. OK, so your school competition, now that you have your your people, first of all, they're going to I would recommend that they memorize a second poem. Because when they participate in the state competition, they will have to have three memorized. So they've had one for the classroom. And the way I work at, at, at CAUSE is everyone performs that first round, their first poem, whatever got them there. And then they have a second poem kind of as like a final round 
we don't do three rounds like the state does. We don't have time uh, to do that kind of competition. So what I'll do is take the top five or six scoring students from the round one and then, okay, now you made it to the final round. You do your second poem that you've memorized. So you're going to need a little bit of time between your classroom competition and then the school competition, which is why I like to have my classroom winners, my list of winners by winter break, to give them those two weeks to, okay, you decide on your poem and you can start memorizing it. And then I usually have my school competition by um, usually by like the semester break, which I know is different for every school. So for us, it's about mid-January. You kind of don't want to go any later than that. And probably the earlier is better, especially with like, you know, the polar ice <laughs> that has been happening here in January lately, you know? So if, if at all possible you can do it before winter break that'd be great but I don't you know I don't know that seems like a tight squeeze to me so they'll have a second poem to memorize again you'll need a copy of both of those poems right from each competitor which can be a hassle getting from everybody but depending on your building you need to decide if you're going to have the school competition after school like an evening event, or right after school one day, or during school. Personally, I've done it both ways. I've done it all three ways. We used to have an evening event after school, and um, literally 10 people would come. You know, the moms and dads, and, um, and that's it. You know, I, I wouldn't charge any ticket price. Just come on, you know, let's pick our winner. And that was okay, but at the same time, I kind of felt like I wanted the fellow classmates of that student, like, there. You know, like, rooting on period one. You know, I don't know. And so I decided, oh, you know, I'm going to do it right after school. I'm not going to take any time in the school day. I'm going to do it, like, 2.30 in the auditorium, people can stay. About 15 people came, you know? Um, so for the last few years at CAUSE, we've done it in, as like an afternoon assembly. And um, you can buy a ticket. You buy a ticket for a dollar and get out of class uh, at the end of the day, right? Yeah, I know. Um, the dollar uh, goes to, well, I've done it a couple different ways. One year we gave it as a donation. I think that was the year, um, maybe the tsunami, right? We gave all that money away. And then um, the last couple years, I've let another student org organization kind of finagle the ticket sale. Because I don't know about in your building, selling tickets, it's like a hassle. So I told Student Senate, you can have every single dollar we make. It can go to the winter dance. Go for it. Senior class, you can have it. It can go to the prom. You guys sell the tickets, and it's out of my hands. So that might be, you know, something. Um, our auditorium does not fit our whole school. So that right there limits the audience. But we have had quite large crowds. And I know it seems like, oh, my goodness, these kids are just buying tickets to get out of class. This is a crazy audience, blah, blah, blah. The kids do really well. You know, yes, of course, they probably are buying the tickets to get out of class. Like, let's be honest. But... When it's time to sit in the auditorium and like listen to their peers deliver these poems, they're super good. Like they really are. It's a good experience for them, you know, like just to sit there and be part of that audience. Um, so that might be something you need to decide with your department and your administration, you know, like what do I, where can I have this and when can I have it? As far as um, prizes go, um, my prizes uh, have been kind of gift cards uh, and maybe like an Amazon gift card or a Barnes and Noble gift card since it's poetry, right? Um, and I've done it a couple different ways. I have utilized my parent organization last year, which was wonderful. Uh, they they kind of gave me $75 or whatever to buy a first place prize and a second place prize. 
Um, and then I, uh, I've kind of used uh, the ticket sales in the past. I've kind of, you know, reimbursed myself from that, which you're not supposed to do, but I did. And then way early, I would just buy it and kind of deduct it from my taxes. Um, but I don't recommend you do that. Um, but if you have a way to get prizes, that would be like the kids really appreciate getting something for winning. I don't give my classroom winners anything, like nothing. You get the 30 points for doing it, yeah. <laughs> Uh -uh. Um, as far as the actual uh, building competition, you're going to need some help. You're going to need judges, okay? And so I would recommend four to five. If you are organizing the building competition, I don't know if you want to be a judge because you got a lot of stuff going on. Okay, if you want to be a judge, that's fine. Then you're going to need someone to work closely with you to organize the building competition, the other stuff. Uh, my judges, I pull from my department, but I also pull from outside of my department. I've had a science teacher judge. The theater teacher has judged, and they're great, you know, or the speech teacher. Um, I've had Katie judge. Um, so someone in your community. Um, one year we had the woman who kind of oversees English and language arts in the district, she came and judged. I had a poet actually come and judge from, we had a connection at OSU. She was a creative writing teacher there. So like see who's in your community that you could kind of pull in as maybe a guest judge and, um, and that, that's quite nice, right? If it ha just has to be your English department, great. That's fine too. Um, but chances are there might be someone else you could kind of tap for the afternoon just to judge a few poems. You will need an MC someone and maybe that would be you uh in the past i've had students do it like the one theatrical student who's in everything right like they that they, they are really good now typically when i start the competition or the, start the actual i open it up and i'm like okay be quiet you know and then they <laughs> they they take over right so also you're going to need the sound or lights student or students right you're going to need really just simple lighting, you know, nothing extravagant, just turn them on, but I don't even know how to do that in my theater. And then you're gonna need someone with a microphone, particularly if you're doing a big competition and the mic can just kind of stand just like this, you know, but you will need that projection um, if you're having the whole school. You will need an accuracy judge. So someone who has the copies of the poems in front of them and is just kind of following along like you do in the classroom competition with that highlighter. Like, okay, where are they missing? Typically, I have a student do this, all right? And they sit right beside me and we converse on every single tick, right? Um, you, if you want to get an adult to do it, that would be fine too, it's just that I, I usually get one of my seniors to, okay, you sit beside me and, and we'll look. The, the specifications in the guide are quite good. And, you know, okay, if they skip a line, you deduct this many points. If they need a cue, this many. You will also need, and perhaps that accuracy judge is your cuer, right? So if that student freezes up on stage and they need a line, they know, okay, that's the person I look to to get the cue from. Then you will also need a tabulator. And that's usually the role I serve because that I, I find it allows me the flexibility to jump up, right? Give the evil eye to a kid who's making noise in the audience, right? Help them, you know. Um, and all the, I'll tell you the Excel spreadsheet on the Poetry Out Loud website, download it. It's fabulous. It makes it so easy. Everything gets added. It's very, very good. Um, I've used it every year since they've created it. And now that we have a new scoring system, I'm going to have to download the new one. But it is really good. So you're not there with a calculator trying to, you know, add everything up. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have as far as just kind of tips and tricks. My, you see my email address there at the bottom. You are more than happy to, to utilize that. If I can help, I will. Of course, you have wonderful resources here with, with Katie and Chiquita, um, but, but I can help any way I know how. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Ms. Foley. That was very thorough, very wonderful and interesting. And, uh, you know, the fact that you've done this program since the very beginning, it shows. And, of course, we always celebrate that. We really, <laughs> we really appreciate the fact that you've been so dedicated because we can't do this program without teachers, without teachers' commitment and dedication, and you embody that. So we always like to, to celebrate that to pre and express our appreciation to you for that. And I want to just brag for a minute because in Ohio we do have bragging rights. The fact that our very first inaugural Poetry Out Loud state champion went on to win the national finals in Washington, D.C., and then we've had several other students to do really well. We've had a top five finalist. Uh, we've had several regional semifinalists. We've had an honorable mention. And there's generally some money that goes along with each one. Uh, two years ago, our student came in second place and won $10,000. Last year, our student came in among the top nine finalists in the country and won $1,000. So Ohio is really doing really well in this program, and we, we appreciate that. But we also have to say that in spite of the money, in spite of the fact that you can be called a winner, it's not just about that. It's the fact that you have a chance to uh, have this wonderful camaraderie with other students. They support each other. They cheer each other on. It's a wonderful thing to see. They have a chance to do something that maybe they didn't think they'd be able to do. That one shy student who gets up and does it and is just like, really, ah, and then they do really well. And then there's just the fact that they fall in love with poetry. They are to select the poem that speaks to them. And they find out something about themselves through selecting that poem. And I think that's the main thing. They fall in love with this art form. So we celebrate that. 